Hey, if you love our show, How to Build an Audience, please consider giving it a rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever else you listen to this podcast. We are trying to help as many entrepreneurs, business owners, and creatives as possible through this podcast. And in order to build our audience, we need your help. A rating and review on Apple Podcasts bring more exposure to our show. Don't wait. I know you will say to yourself that you will do it later, but head over to Apple Podcasts now and drop a quick review. Thank you in advance. Now, let's get to the show. The entire reason that my account grew is because it was so people-driven and it's it's so you know relationally based. And I want people to come to my account and feel like, they get a glimpse into my daily life. I don't want them to come to my account and feel like it's the Shelby show. Welcome to How to Build an Audience. We interview the top creatives, marketers, and communicators to help you become an expert at building an audience so you can grow your influence, increase sales, and effectively share your story. This show is brought to you by Gatozi Collective. Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of How to Build an Audience. I'm your host, Matthew Katozi. Today I'm talking with Shelby Sorrell. Shelby has some of the best Instagram stories on the platform. Her vibrant photos of food, restaurants, and awesome has helped her build a massive following online. Shelby posts a lot on Instagram, like a lot, but no one minds because the pictures are amazing and the captions are hilarious. She started her Instagram as a creative outlet from her corporate job working in retirement. She was always getting friends to take photos with food or at the newest restaurant. This creative project got heads turning and brands and local businesses wanted to work with her to drive business. As her brand developed, so did her social media skills. She left corporate and started working as a social media strategist for some of Austin's top culinary and retail institutions. She has grown her own following to over 45,000 people on Instagram and has worked with major brands like Starbucks, American Express, HEB, Panera Bread, DoorDash, Lyft, and many more. We especially like Shelby because she's a part of the Katozi Collective team and works on projects with us. In this episode, we talk about Shelby's start to Instagram. We talk about how she built her audience while working in corporate America. We talk about how she has pushed through burnout. We also discuss how to stay authentic online and true to your audience. I would love to hear what you think as you're listening to the podcast. So reach out to me, Matthew Katozzi, on LinkedIn or Twitter, and we can talk there. Now, let's talk to Shelby. It's so funny that you noticed that I posted like three or four times a day because people would get super annoyed by it, like by that. So people would either like love it or people would unfollow me and be like, you've gone crazy. Um, But in 2015, I worked in retirement. So I did non-qualified deferred compensation plans in a cubicle at the Chase Tower. It is what it sounds like. It's boring. Um, And I'm very much a person which... Um, you might know this about me already, but like I will take like 20 or 30 photos at an event or at a restaurant and I have 3000 edited photos, favorited, ready to be posted to my Instagram right now. So like whenever people are like struggling to create content, like I just find that really odd because I'm like, what do you mean? I have 3000 photos. Like I could post anything right now, like from anywhere. Um, so when I worked in corporate America, I hit this rut where I was like, okay, So I hit 10,000 followers when I worked in corporate America at that job. I hit it literally sitting in my cubicle. (laughs) And I guess I just reached a point where I was like, I hate what I'm doing. I'm passionate about creating and taking photos and sharing spaces with other people and making derpy posts with weird captions and to kind of make the day go by in a way that didn't feel as blah. I would just like continually crank stuff out because I liked interacting with the outside world and I liked sharing photos that I really loved and having other people like those photos and like knowing that what I was doing, people were enjoying. So it didn't feel like I was just doing this like job that was totally in vain. I was actually like doing something I really loved by like oversharing. And then I, then I obviously got to a point where I was like, okay, this is excessive. Like this is madness. But, um, 
yeah, I mean, I don't recommend posting three times a day. Anyone, (laughs) (laughs) this was four years ago. Okay. When I was like YOLO, there are no rules. Um, but yeah, so it was kind of just like a, a creative outlet for me in a, in a corporate America world. Yeah. When Shelby started, she was just posting a lot of photos online. This was also the days when Instagram stories didn't exist and you weren't able to post multiple photos on one post on Instagram. The crazy thing is, she wasn't even using hashtags. She wasn't on a schedule to build a following. She was just creating. I wanted to know how she was able to get her first few followers who weren't people she knew if she wasn't even using the traditional tactics you would think to use. Yeah, so... Um, I got lucky and in college, I was involved in a bunch of different organizations. So I kind of had a good core following at the beginning of, you know, a thousand people or whatever that were just friends of slash people I knew or whatever colleagues. Um, I always struggle when people ask me this because I don't have a concrete answer. Um, For me, it just was this gradual thing of like I would make my friends go stand with murals and I would post something derpy or I would post like a cute friend of mine at a restaurant or I was just like taking these photos of people that I loved and like posting food, which nobody really did at that point, right? Like nobody in 2015 was like, I mean, some people were clearly, but like, I don't think that many people were like, yo friends, chill. Like I got to take a picture of our food. Like that just wasn't super often. And so I think people liked seeing fun, pretty photos of restaurants and food and humans with pretty Austin spots. Cause it was pretty much always Austin based. So people would comment like, where's this mural? Where is that? And, um, I, I think it was around 6,000 followers that I was like, what's happening? Like, why are people following along with this? Why does anybody care about my mural photos? And then like looking at it, I was like, well, my feed's colorful. It's bright. And I think a lot of people, and this is something that I've asked a lot of people because I didn't understand it. I think a lot of people liked that I didn't follow the rules, like that it was just this like, like YOLO account where I was just like, I'm just posting what I want to post. And like, here's my friends and here's food. And this is what I'm doing. And like, if you like it, cool. Um, And so I think that people liked that it didn't feel super calculated. And now, now it's much more curated, obviously. Like we are in the point where it's my job. So it's much more calculated than it used to be, but Um, I think people liked that it was just kind of like off the cuff. Here's a photo of food. Bye. What part of discipline and kind of consistency helps or helped your, your building of your audience specifically? And how do you feel like consistency and that discipline of just showing up every day um, can help anybody build their audience? So I think like, going back to the hashtag thing that you said, like I, I could have grown so much quicker had I used hashtags posting at the frequency that I was. But I think because I did show up so much and I posted so often, people liked following along because they felt like they were walking alongside life with me in a way. Um, And so, you know, the first photo I posted being on that road trip to Arizona, like I posted a bunch of photos from said road trip and just didn't really care if I was posting too many because at the time it was just for fun. It was just me shouting into the void that are my friends. And so over time, when I was posting multiple photos a day during corporate America, I think a lot of people, either one who are also in corporate America or two people like you who were new to Austin and were like, I need places to go. You could go to my page and like, yes, it would kind of be excessive some days, but you knew that there was going to be consistent Austin content there. And if that's what you wanted, that's what you got. And so I think my account grew a lot without me using hashtags for a while because I was posting so much that I would, I would pop up on this person's page or I would tag this friend or I would post Lindsay from eating ATX or I'd post this restaurant. And so then people over time were like, Oh, we like what she's posting. This is all cool, educational Austin stuff. This is great. And then I started using hashtags when my friend Ray kind of schooled me on it and was like, why are you not using hashtags to get better reach? And I was like, what? What's they, that? they feel desperate. And he was like, yeah. you're silly. That's literally the point of hashtags. And so, yeah. yeah. So I guess I just kind of, I think like just even on the days when I didn't want to post, I just did. Especially when Shelby was starting out, she rarely was taking photos of herself. She mostly was taking photos of her friends at restaurants or other places in Austin. 
the community around her seemed to have helped build her audience. You know, I think a lot of accounts these days are just very self-focused. And I think people want to see like real people in people's communities and friends and you know, I could post myself over and over and over and over again. And then eventually people are like, okay, we get it. But, you know, the influencer sphere is already so oversaturated with white blonde women. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I think it's just, and there's nothing wrong with that, like I at all, but I think it just gets to a point when people are like, okay, we understand that we get it. But for me, it brings me so much joy to take photos of others and like to involve my friends in it. Um, and it was always funny because I would force them to do it. Like they would be like, oh, this is so stupid. And I'd be like, just stand with this mural. And then they would be like, oh wait, that's like a really good photo. I actually really like that. Yeah. So then it brought me joy to be like, yeah, you're pretty. Like you're a babe. Let's post this photo. Like you look great. And so it was really fun for me, um, to take photos of other people. Plus I think at the time, in all honesty, like nobody really knew how to take photos of me that I was spending my time with. Because when I was building my account, I wasn't hanging out with a ton of the influencers that I'm friends with now who know how to take photos of me. Right. So I was essentially just hanging out with my friends who are just normal people. And I'm always kind of been like one of the more creative um, driven ones where like, I've always been the one that wanted to take a million photos. And I've always been the one that wanted to like figure out how to make something aesthetically pleasing. And that's just always kind of been what I've done. And so I think like, yeah, I don't know. I remember when I started posting me, people were like, what? And I was like, surprise. Because <laughs> nobody, I would go to like these events and nobody knew what I looked like for a while. What was the moment when you were like realizing this is different and that maybe I could m make money off of this? Like what, what was that moment for you? Was it somebody reaching out to you? Was it you kind of researching and seeing other people do it? Like what made you switch? So when I had those 6,000 followers and I was going to restaurants and doing all of those things, um, my good friend, Lindsay, who's with Eating ATX, started inviting me to a bunch of events. And so I started meeting more and more influencers, getting to enjoy more, you know, free meals, which I would never post a meal that I didn't like. So just to be clear, but um, I got to create more content because it was more accessible to me to go to these things, to create content and do these things. And so I think when I hit 6,000, um, that was when I was becoming really good friends with Lindsay. And at that time I had accepted a lot of trade, just like free product um, for posts. So like, I know one of my very first ones was like a tea subscription box and they would send me the box every month and I would post a feed post for them. And I think I mentioned that to Lindsay and she was like, oh, well, have you thought about asking them if they could like pay you something for that because you're providing them with a service and maybe they could compensate you. So really for me, the moment that I realized I could make money was when I started talking to other Austin influencers about making money and seeing other people who were doing it. And then I was like, well, wait a minute, my content is good and maybe I should do, you know, have them pay me something, even if it's not a ton and you know, I worked with coach and they sent me a $2,000 purse and I posted four feed posts, which is not like that doesn't make a lot of sense in the scheme of like what one should charge. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I think I realized that through talking to other people who did it. So like I kind of had, I wouldn't want to say that they like mentored me, but they kind of did. Like they took me a little bit under their wing and were like, Hey, we really like you. We like your content and this is what you should be doing. So why don't you do it? So now when I meet new influencers who have 10,000 followers and aren't accepting or requesting money, I'm like, listen, let's chat about this. You should be charging. So. After the break, Shelby tells us how she started to shift her content to have advertisements and monetize her work. This podcast is presented by Gatozi Collective. We are a marketing agency in Austin, Texas that teaches entrepreneurs how to create content and market their businesses. We can do the marketing for you or teach you how to do it yourself. Are you confused about where or how you need to market your business or side hustle? 
We have a free course that will clarify your marketing strategy in five days that you can sign up online at our website, gatosicollective.com. Now, let's get back to the show. Shelby has worked with amazing brands that we all know, like Panera Bread, Lyft, or Starbucks, but she also does a great job of not always selling her audience products. Shelby calls herself to a high standard of authenticity online and with her brand deals. When she first started to monetize some of her content, it was not easy. I think for me, um, I was really weird when I first started posting myself because I didn't know if people actually cared to see anything about me ever. Um, or like if I shared parts of my life, if they were going to find that interesting or not. And people were actually responded really well to that. Like they wanted to actually see me and get to know me because they were like, well, we feel like we know so much of your life, but we don't actually know you really. Um, and so I think like that was not something that people pushed back on at all. People liked that and encouraged that. Um, and people still are like, you need to post more of you. And I'm like, I feel like I do, but okay. Um, I do feel like I got a lot of pushback when I started transitioning to like more curated. Um, cause I think people kind of got used to the whole one to two to three times a day thing and just the like throwing caution to the wind. And so when I did started being like fairly calculated with what I was posting, I think a lot of people could tell and were kind of like, well, wait a minute, why are we pivoting and like being more, um, more wordy with your captions. Cause you know, starting out in 2012, they were just like pun after pun after whatever. It was one-liners all yeah, day. Yeah, just one-liner. And I still, I'll still do a one-liner. Like my caption today was a one-liner, but it's it's a bit rare for me to just do like a pizza pun, right? Because I feel like I've used it already or like it's old or people don't care. So I still yeah. sometimes try to throw in like the funny, just like filler, whatever posts um, that still bring me joy and hopefully still bring my followers joy. But um for sure got pushed back when I started curating more because I think people were kind of like, this feels inauthentic, which is obviously something I want to talk about further because people need to try really hard to be as authentic as possible if you want to grow your following. Um, so I think people thought that. And then when I started doing a lot more ads, like more paid stuff, there was a lot of pushback and I lost a lot of followers when it first started. But then after I think like my fifth advertisement post, People were like, okay, this is just like the new normal. And if if we like the content she's putting out, we're going to have to keep following her and like partake in those posts as well. Because I do, t I do post a ton of, you know, like free good content of just like restaurants I really like that I go to and pay for. So I think if people want to continue to see places in Austin that I really like to go, there is going to be that occasional sponsored post in there. And I think people have kind of gotten over the whole pushback aspect. You talked a lot about, authenticity and wanting to talk about that authenticity of you posting. And I think that's super important. What I've loved about even going back through all of your work is that I feel like I really have understood who you are through time. Like I think you do a great job of posting about yourself and posting life. And it's really kind of cool to see your work progress, not only in photography, but just like who you are as a person. I mean, it's five years is a pretty long time. I think I've been following you for like almost four now. And it's like, you definitely have seen such a progression in, in your work. Um, how has it been for you to like keep authentic to who you are and like keep that creativity that you had, like when you first started, when you were still in corporate America to now where you're working with a lot of bigger brands, there's a lot more money on the line. How do you juggle those two things? It is so hard. Um, it's super hard when, so like, I don't like beer, point blank. We'll never drink it. I think it's gross. But I did a partnership with Dose. I did a partnership with Bud Light. And as long as for me, something feels like I can make it authentic to me, I'll do it. Yeah. So when I did the partnership with Dose, and I'm only saying Dose because I say it wrong whenever I say the full beer's name. Dos Equis? Equis. Perfect. Got it. Um, go. I always say it wrong and people, people make fun of the way I say it. Ooh, yeah. We'll cut it out on the podcast. Uh, it is what it is. Um, so 
when I did that partnership, it was for a fashion show with six of my other Austin influencer friends. And all we had to promote was their um, like towel jacket and a clothing line. So nowhere in my post did I have to say, I like beer. I'm into beer. I just had to say like, this clothing line is hilarious. Come join me at this fashion show with this guy from Parks and Rec. It's going to be a blast. So as long as I'm not having to like completely lie through a partnership, I'll do it. But you can teeter that line somewhere. It's difficult because like, you know, I'm lactose intolerant, but if a dairy brand wants to work with me, I'm going to work with a dairy brand if you're big and you're wonderful because I love dairy and all of my followers love dairy. I'm not going to chug a gallon of milk, but like, do I eat pizza and queso at least once or twice a week? Absolutely. Lactate exists. I can do these things, but as long as I, I guess in terms of like, like the whole juggling the two thing, like as long as I know that I am presenting a narrative that my followers would respond to and that is authentic to me, then I'll do it. And if I can, if I can ask said dairy company, like, can I make a lactose intolerant joke in here of like, I'm lactose intolerant, but when I do want cheese, I want this cheese. Or, you know, can I make it like funny and the fact that everyone knows, pretty much everyone who follows me knows these things, right? So you don't want to counteract those things all the time by being inauthentic because nobody wants to follow somebody who one day is like, this is my favorite seltzer. And then the next day is like, just kidding, White Claw is my favorite. Just kidding, Truly is my favorite. Because then you're like, okay, you're allowed to change your opinions, human, but like, which one are you promoting now? And you're allowed to like all of them. Just don't say one's your fave. Like, just figure out how to word things in a way that's like, I really like White Claw because they have X amount of flavors and it tastes really good when I'm on a boat. I really like Truly because they have zero calories. I don't know what they have. I'm making stuff up, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, totally. So it sounds like you really think a lot about your audience, like not in the sense of like the numbers, but how you are to them and how you relate with them. How does, how does being aware of them, your people that you're actually talking to, because it sounds like you're highly aware that these are other humans that you know and love and almost like very receptive to even just strangers or just people that follow you. How is that important to even growing the following that you've created today since the last few years? If you post on your Instagram a hundred percent of the time, purely for yourself, it shows and it's not cute. And that could just be a matter of opinion for me, but the entire reason that my account grew is because it was so people driven and it's it's so you know relationally based and i want people to come to my account and feel like they get a glimpse into my daily life i don't want them to come to my account and feel like it's the shelby show because first of all i don't think that i'm all that in a bag of chips anyway but i mean i think i'm all right and i think some people think i'm all right so no like, you're all right <laughs> Ah, uh, I'll take it. Um, so I think like there are too many accounts that exist already that are just so self-driven that I think it's so important to be others driven. And I think that's just a part of just like me as a human and how I've lived my life is I'm very like focused on my friends and others and people and relationships. And so if I feel like I'm posting something on my account and the sole purpose of it is to praise myself like, what's the point in that? And that's not to say that I haven't posted something and innately it was slightly about me and I haven't meant for it or I didn't mean for it to be because, you know, intent and impact are two totally different things. But I know, like, I know my heart and what I'm posting. And as long as I'm posting for others, like, what will someone get out of this restaurant if I post this? Then that's what I want to do. Shelby has been building her audience for many years now, and contrary to popular belief, it is hard to be a full-time content creator on Instagram. What makes Shelby stand out is that she is still creating today after so many years. How did she do it? Has she ever burned out? How did she overcome it? That's a hard one. Um, Honestly, if I didn't have the community of friends that I have now who are all, I mean, I have have multiple different friend groups, but like, I am such good friends with so many of the influencers in Austin as well, that if I didn't have them around to be like, Hey, take a break. If you don't want to post right now, take a break and then post when you're ready. Or 
like friends like um Shruti and Chelsea are two of my very best friends and they challenge me all the time they're like hey if you don't want to share that don't share that thing but if you do do it and we're here and we back you up and you should continue because people love what you do and so for me it kind of goes back to the whole people thing like just having people who rallied behind me and were like look you did not love corporate America you could go back to it. Sure. It's going to always be there waiting for you, but like you are growing your account. You're posting good content. You have something to bring to the table for people who live in Austin. That's different than what other people do here. And like not doing that would be like doing a disservice to folks in Austin who want to learn about cool places in Austin. Um, and so I basically just like sought a lot of encouragement and yeah, I kind of just had my friends backing me a lot of the time um, to get me to keep going. And um, there was one day that I was about to throw in the towel and Chelsea literally was like, let's go on a photo adventure. Let's just do it real quick. Like get cute. We're doing it. And we drove around Austin. We took photos of each other and we created and it was just goofy and fun. And I was like, okay, this is what I love. Like, this is what I love doing. And I want to post photos of this city because I like doing that. Like, I'm good. I'm going to keep doing it. And so it took a lot of people rallying behind me and encouraging me to get me to keep going. As we end the podcast, we will finish with a segment called Open Mic. We are going to end each episode by giving the guests a space to share about anything that is on their mind, more advice, or anything else that could be off-brand. I've touched on these things a bit throughout this, but I think some things that I think people really need to understand and know is that influencers are people too. Like We are just like you. We are normal people. We have feelings. We have hearts. We care about things. We have passions. And we have all of these things about us that make us different and unique. And a lot of people pigeonhole influencers because of the word, quote, quote, influencer. And I think it's important for people to know, like, I didn't, like necessarily like ask for this, like my account grew and I was like, this is rad. And I'm going to like continue doing this. Cause I like sharing these things and I'm a real person. And so I think just knowing that like the person on the other side of the screen is real is really important. Um, advice that I would give to anybody starting out would be stay authentic to who you are, create content that you love and that you can get behind because if you can't back up your content or you don't like what you're sharing, there's absolutely no point in your account. Um, do you do what brings you joy? Don't let the haters get you down. And yeah, just, just be authentic, be who you are. Um, keep putting stuff out there that you love. And if you post good photos that, that you can get behind and that bring you joy, then people will follow along and will like that. And that's really the most important advice that I would, that I would share. This conversation with Shelby made me think more about how I share online and if I am people-focused or if it is self-focused. You can follow Shelby on Instagram at Shelby Sorrell and visit her website at shelbysorrell.com. All the links to find Shelby will be in the show notes. Thank you, Shelby, for being on the show. If you like this show, tweet me at Matthew Gatozzi, and if you really love this show, drop a rating on Apple Podcasts or your podcast listening app, and I'll talk to you next week. This podcast is presented by Gatozi Collective. We are a marketing agency in Austin, Texas that teaches entrepreneurs how to create content and market their businesses. We can do the marketing for you or teach you how to do it yourself. Are you in need of a logo? We have a team of creatives to help you with all your marketing and design needs. You can reach out to us by emailing us at hello at gatozicollective.com or visit us online at our website, gatozicollective.com. We hope that you enjoyed the show and we'll see you in the next episode.